hello, hello. Today is another Art at Scat episode with yet another fabulous, talented artist from Somerville. I mean, you are rich in artistic traditions and artists. And she's making faces because she's very modest. But this is Julia Burns Lederman. Oh, Lieberman. Oh, can we do that again? I'm sorry. Oh, it was pre-recorded. Oh, okay. Julia Burns Lieberman, whose name I love to say the full name. So, and she's a very talented artist, and welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I mean, it's an it, honor. Yeah, and we met through an artist. We did. Liz Lamanche. One of my, one of the people that I share sort of studio space with, and she's really an awesome person and an awesome artist, and yeah. I'm happy to have been introduced. Yeah, and she, she uh, did a show here several months ago, and then she brings us the gift of you, which is wonderful. <laughs> See, I'm just saying, you're laughing, but artists are, are hard to find for the, sh are hard to come to a show like this because you're so busy producing, and I know that feeling because I'm, I'm a painter myself, that it's hard to trap you all and catch you and make you sit down and meet with the public. Well, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm happy to be trapped. It's a pretty good place. It is, it is. And um, you do some incredible work. Is there, um, you, oh, well, your work will be on exhibit for the month of October. Right in the hallway out there. Yes, and we have a reception date of? October 21st. October 21st. During the day, when we might be able to catch some uh, farmer's market. Okay, days. so that's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to come down. SCAT has great hours, and you'll be able to see her work also in the gallery. And it will be wonderful. And the reception's always fun. I hope so. <laughs> so let's start your choice. Where would you like to choose? Start. We'll start smallest first. Okay. Now, Julia works in watercolor, correct? And yet it seems to be delicate. I mean, I've, I, when I do watercolor, it's all over the place. And you've tamed it, and you've given it this comical. I I really want to smile when I see your work. That's that's a that's a good thing. I like oh. that. I like to make people smile it, it, and, and laugh, and I try to be humorous in my titles and my little the little short stories that I write to go along with them because it, it's good to draw people in both visually and with a little, you know, enticing, imaginary, imaginative tidbit. And it. Um, it's delicate and yet very funny. And I love your titles. The title of this one is What Happened on Venus Stays on Venus. And as a woman and a woman and a woman, then uh, there's a third woman here, and that's Aria. She's in the background um, doing, making this happen for you. Um, we all know that whatever stays in Venus, what happens in Venus stays in Venus. So this is very appropriate. And the colors. The, how, how do you plan this out? How do you? So I start, I, I start with a f fine tip black pen. Well, I, so I sketch it out in pencil. Um, and then I go over my sketch in a fine tip black pen. And I usually start with a sort of construction of, well, these are sort of curvy, but I, I sort of, I draw the, the line, the, the curves or the, I draw the, the sort of bare lines first, mm -hmm. and then I hang things off of them. I put a little castle here, or I put a leaf there, or I put a little blob, or a light, or a, you know, another shape. And, and I just keep going, and sometimes I go too far, but you know, then I have fun with it. And I, so I draw all the shapes, and then I sit there and go, oh, what colors am I gonna put where, and how am I gonna make it balance out? And, do I want it to balance out? And you know, sometimes I do things all in one. I'll say, oh, I only want to use you know, green and blue and yellow. Or, but often I do multicolored um, things, and I just, I just keep going, and then I'm done, and then I usually put it away for a while. I um, I never start with a title, so then I have to come up with a title, and that's not usually very easy. I have to sit there, and sometimes, some, sometimes this this one I actually kind of knew. When I was done, oh, I know how it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna play out. But I usually just sort of 
sometimes titles are easy, but often they're not. And then, then I have a title, and then if I'm, if I'm putting it, if I'm matting it, you want to switch I over to, to? I put it. um sure. I I if I'm matting it, then I write a little short story to go with it. That is, you know, that's what makes this so wonderful too, because the artist has taken the time to give us some thoughts behind the piece, or yes, thoughts about the piece, and it reminds they they seem to be like more like book plates to me. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, I guess so. They're, and their, they're their own book plates. They're their own, yeah. Yeah, and each one has a story. And for some reason, I'm also thinking, it's going to sound crazy, but Dr. Seuss should eat his heart out. <laughs> <laughs> because these would tell great stories. Cat in a Hat, you don't have a hat compared to these. You know, <laughs> this is just, they make you laugh, they make you smile. If you've had a rough day at work, this is the place to come. I mean, and some of them are a little creepy, and some of them are, you know, less, I mean, this, this, the tagline of this is, you know, what happens on Venus stays on Venus, and then, but the mind wipe will cost you extra, because I like to be, you know, a little bit silly. And then this one is about a... Waking up in a new place, and... How many of us have done that or wish we had waken up in a new place? And then I turn it into something sort of extraterrestrial because that's where my mind goes sometimes. Um, and uh, so... I love that there's a story. How long does it take you to do the story with it? I mean, if I, if I have a good title, then the title leads me to the story fairly you know, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be like, hey, waking up, waking up in a new place. And then I, like, what happens is I title things. And then, and then I say, okay, you know what, I like this one what, enough that I want to get it matted. So, and, and that, and usually that's, okay, so I like it enough to get it matted. I got to come up with a good little short story to go with it. And so then it sort of, it, it doesn't, once I've got it all sort of sitting around in my brain, it's, it's not, I mean, again, some, some, short stor some stories take longer than others. S this one was sort of, you know, they, 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 it just depends on what's floating around in my brain at the time and, and how I'm letting it bounce off of this. Um, and these are the perfect short stories. I just read a book of uh, short stories, and they're 50 words each. Yours are less, and it, but it's a wonderful way because I, I like brevity. I like just to get to the point. And um, your, your illustrations do that. And it, it's, it's very relaxing because we were running around here a little crazy before. And this is very calming. I mean, these are beautiful. They're delicate. They're one of a kind. Yes, these are original watercolors. And, you know, you come in to the reception. You get to talk to the artist. You see how cool she is. Very cool. And very modest and very good. And then you get to see what she's doing. You, I mean, you get to talk to her and she shares. She's very generous in talking about her process. Now, I want to go to this one, if I may. Sure. And this one, if we could title, the title is The title is, title sleep is Sleepwalking. I mean, and I, I've been doing some more trees lately. And trees, the trees all have I do cities. I always have little castles, which represents the city, little skyline castle type things, and uh, and and I, I I have been doing more trees, things that look more like trees, less um, and with little cities in their branches, and um, and I and I and when I was drawing the roots on this one, I was doing, I was experimenting with things. I was doing a new thing. The roots ended up looking very much like they were moving, and 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 I thought, oh, okay, so this this tree city is is on the move. It's going somewhere. And then I was thinking about, you know, what kind of motivations and what kind of and how was this tree moving and why was this tree moving and then I was like oh it's like it's doing it at night it's sleepwalking and then I sort of went from sleepwalking and then I and then I it it it, it you know it, it sort of has dreams and it and it it gets its roots out of the soil and it sort of starts moving along and then when people wake up in the morning they're somewhere else they're they're they're, they're in their city they still live where they live but where they live isn't 
where it used to be. I do like the idea of a sleepwalking tree because sometimes you don't look at the, your, your, your uh, settings. And so it would be ironic to see that your tree moved. Uh, it could be magical, it's like Oz. And I just like the idea like, ah, uh, you didn't even see me when I was over there, but now that I'm blocking traffic. Now that I'm blocking traffic. This is, and what I love is, now is this gold or it's, copper? So it's, it's gold gouache, and then I did copper gouache doodles on top of the gold gouache. It's, it's very delicate and the colors um, are, they add to the mystique of the piece. I mean, even the way you sign your work, because I'm really sloppy, I put my name really big, uh, even your signature, everything just fits. It just has this nice flow. I've, I've, I've practiced, that. that is one of those things where, when, you know, when you're in high school, you know, sometimes people practice, you know, like, their signature with somebody else's name. I was practicing, you know, what is my, what is my art signature going to be? When I grow up and I become an artist, what is it going to be? Oh, I love that thought. Not many people think of that. What, it, was it, what, it, what is my signature going to be? And so, my, and so I was like, well, I, so I did a lot of thinking, and then I came up with just my initials, just like that, and it's just JBL, and, and, it, and I like it <laughs> because I can tuck it in somewhere and make it hide and not make it be a distraction at the bottom of the page. It's just part of... It's just, organic. It's, it's just, just in there. I just hide it. It's there. It's, you know... And then they're all games like this, just to see all the different images. And also, I love the intensity, the way that you change the intensity of the color. So it'll be very deep hue, and then you'll lighten it up. And that takes a lot, because it's very easy to go heavy-handed. I mean, I tend to work with more pigment and less water than a lot of other people who work with watercolors. So when people think of watercolors, they think of sort of very flowy, loose watercolors, which is not where I go, really. I'm always sort of, I'm, I, I have the watercolor, I let them flow into each other, but I'm very, like, I'm a little bit of a control freak for somebody who does watercolor. So, you know, I'll have it in, in a confined space. It can do what it wants, but it's in that space. It's mm -hmm. in that, <clears throat> that. And they're small spaces. Yeah. They're, they're very delicate. Um, you'll see when you come in to see the work, there's swirls in here, and they're just so fine and so delicate. It's like looking at jewelry. It really is. And jewelry placed in places that um, play with the eye. Well, thank you. I, I, I love, I, I have, I'm trying to work a little bit bigger these days just to expand my horizons and try new things. I tend to work pretty small. Like, I make a lot of things. I, if I like something, that's great, but also I'm working small, so if I don't like something, well, it's done anyway, and then I move on. And, but, it's you know, a good mostly, attitude to have, too. <laughs> I mean, you know, some, some of them I don't finish because I'm just like, ugh. But. And this one is um, the, go the golem in the new world. Yeah. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. yeah. I was feeling a little bit anxious because of uh, recent political developments and there had been some comments that, you know, were Jews even human? Were they golems? And I was like, what? The, you can't take our, 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 myth, our mythology, our story of how, of, of, of like the, the magic that's gonna save us from our neighbors, you can't turn that into some bullshit, anti-Semitic crap, I mean, obviously, but, so, so I was like, I, I gotta write some, I gotta write some, I gotta make some of these paintings be about golems, be about, be about, because the golem is the, is the, <clears throat> the, the, the figure that the, the rabbi or the learned person goes down to the, to the river and makes a figure out of, out of clay, and either it sometimes writes um, emet, uh, or puts a piece of paper with emet in its, in its mouth. Message. Emet means truth. Okay. Um, Usually it's Emmet, I think, and it's, I could be wrong about the word, I'm not an expert, but, and it, and it comes to life and it's the defender of the city, of the, of the, the, of the ghetto, of the shtetl, of, you know, defends the Jewish, the people, Jews from their Gentile neighbors who want to kill them. And sometimes there's stories of where it gets out of control, but I just wanted something, I wanted to, 
a feeling of protection because so many of us are having our protections stripped away daily, <laughs> daily, daily. So I, I, you know, I, I did some, some Gollum stories and, uh, you know, so that's, that's where that came out of, of anxiety and wanting to, to, to punch Nazis. <laughs> okay. And the other thing, too, is sharing a cultural image where people have tried to pervert it. Right. And make it something else to their use. Suddenly you flip it on them and show them that, no, this is my culture. You will not degrade it or use it. And look, I've come up with a statement for you. And, and I. I like the idea of too of putting I don't know if it, it is accurate, but the truth, the idea of truth in the mouth, it's I hope it's accurate. <laughs> but but it's still it's a beautiful thought of arming something with truth, to speak your truth. Because as an African American, um, for people who are Asian, Latina, whoever you are, whatever color, size, race I, you know, wherever you are, we should be feeling safe. Yes, it would be wonderful for us all to be feeling safe. And, and people use our images in vain against us. Yep, whatever they can. And I was, I was also feeling like, okay, so I have this, you know, people bring their cultures with them when they go to a new place or when they're taken to a new place. And, um, and I was thinking about a golem and, and, and coming, a golem coming to, coming to the United States, coming to a big city, and then you find that there are other protective creatures there. They're already there. From other, from other, other cultures. cultures. And so, you, so they're all like working together to try to help us. What their people can't do, they can do. You know, we all have, we all have protection stories. We all have, you know, the, the monsters that save us from the other monsters. Mm -hmm. I feel that that's kind of the thing, and um, and so if they could work together, those would be our, the superheroes. All of our well, yes, but the sort of pre-superhero. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, like because, the true superheroes you know, right, that are. Uh, if, if all of our if all of our protective protectiveness of, of if we could all. And so then you come here and you see art, and that's. That's the purpose of art, too. It's to bring forth a truth, but also to help you settle yourself, yet inspire, your, inspire yourself. You know, artists are sharing feelings with you, and... I have so many feelings. <laughs> you know, and, and just like inspiring you to open up and take those insecurities and those fears and do something with them. Put them down on paper. If put them down on canvas with paint, with pencil. Write the words. I'm big on when I in my own work. I use words to um, to express something. There's one piece, if I could, mm. and it's the word nigger. But what I said is never is God given enough respect. Huh. Because I got, you know, I got mad at Jay Z because he said Gwyneth Paltrow, she's okay, she can use the word, and I thought, um, and I love Aria's face that just then when I said that, wow. um, and but that was my response to all these people that were using it, and to take the power out of the word and energize it in a different way. That's that's pretty uh, powerful and, yeah. And, and you know, all of you out there too, you have a gift that you can use. And we're here, we've sort of discovered some of our gifts, but not really, because we're still growing. We're just little kids and big bodies. That's a good way to describe it. And some people can handle their little kid emotions better than others, which is how you get conflicts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we learn, and this is another way of expressing all those feelings that are there, I've, taking it out. I've always done art, and, and then I was writing creatively for a while, and I got blocked, so then I went back to doing visual art. And in the inter I hadn't really done a lot of visual art in the interim, so I sort of took a break, and then when I came back, I was my, I mean, I was in my 
late 20s or you know when I was doing it again and I was and I was just I al I've always doodled I've always you know you're, you're in class and somebody's and you're you know you're sort of you're taking notes but you're also like just ah, you really haven't doing, taken notes. Just, you, you know, you're just doing some weird little thing, and then, you know, and so this is just came out of doodling again after not really doodling enough. I was, I was, and and I wasn't feeling blocked with with the doodles because they just sort of they just come out the end of my hand. You know, I'm left-handed, and and um, and then and then after a while, I was sort of adding back the creative writing aspect. So now I've got them so that they're sort of, they're working together. And it, it feels really good. It's a good balance because I clearly wasn't, I was unbalanced for a while. And now I'm, I'm finding this, oh, you know, I can, I can do this, this thing that is, it's not that it's easy, but it's, I don't, because um, I mean, I clearly, I, I work on it. I spend a lot of time arguing with myself about color selection and or and I, I'll say things like oh you know I like that part but there's this one leaf here that I didn't like or something you can find when you when you're an artist you can you can you can find there's always something you don't like in the a critic piece. comes you know, screaming yeah, out I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a critic of myself and 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 so you just I but I but I instilled do it and I was and I was just sort of the, I don't know. I have I have a lot of fun melding the the creative writing and the and the and the watercolor and just have them work together to to tell the story and to illustrate the story and yeah. That's why I love this program because people like you, artists, share not just the image but the process of creating the image. And um, it's important for folks to understand, like, what is it that we're doing? And that you're probably doing this at home all the time. Even if you cook, you're creating art, you know? And so you're doing stuff. And now we're telling you it is art. And you have this power. Each time an artist comes on the show, it's such a great, message that they give, so many messages about inspiring people to go. And some people have formal training, some people, I didn't ask you, do you I have? I don't, I don't, I took art classes all through high school and a few in college, but I didn't, I don't have, you know, form, for, formal training, not certainly in, in this. I, I just have always been, you know, creative in this way. And, but I also love, like, like show, I love show, like when when kids come to open studios or whatever. I I love saying, okay, so this is how I did this, and I show them how I start a piece, and I say, look, you can do that, and then they do that, and it's like, but it's okay. It's your art. It's even if you're doing sort of the same things, it's yours. Mm -hmm. You can take that home with you. You know that piece of it that you made that. That's your art. That's, that's not very my generous. Art. That's very nice. I mean, but it's I like to. Some people are scared of art. They think that it's this, like, that it's magic, right? And it's not magic, it's work. And there's some people that are better suited to certain kinds of work than others. And, you know, and, and, and there's some people that are, that have that, you know, it, it comes out and everybody has that, like, you know, you try to squish somebody into a box and something sort of oozes out and that's, that's the mm -hmm. art. <laughs> that's a weird way to put it. it. It is, but I see people and they say, oh, I could never do that. And I keep, my favorite story that I tell all the time is that I'm always afraid that there's some kid out there that's going to draw a picture and the teacher's going to say, nice tree. And they go, that's my dad or that's my mom. And then they never want to pick up another anything again and you know what that could have been your mom it could have been your dad it could have been you it could have just been a stick who knows but you made it and it's okay to own it yeah and it's and it's okay to like you know there, I make so much so many paintings that I that I don't like so you're out you're it's not I mean I, I, I have you know four here I have some out there I'm not displaying everything I make because some of it is 
junk. You know, <laughs> some of it I look at it and I go, you know, that, well, I'll just, I'll just not look at that for a while. And then sometimes I come back and I go, you know, that, doesn't, that isn't nearly as bad as I thought it was at first. And then... Said as a true inner critic. And then you realize, that's damn good. You know, but then sometimes you're like, no, no, I've, I've looked at it for a while and, you know, eh. But it's not, I mean, nobody's perfect and everybody's always working to, you know, whenever you're, you're doing something like this, you're always thinking about all the, at least for me, I'm thinking about the other, all the other paintings that have, you know, come before it and what am I going to do and how is this going to be different and am I, am I, is it going to be different than the one that I've just finished? Sometimes I have like three or four going at once because I'll draw a bunch of them at one time and then just sort of go, oh, I'm, you know, you're, you're giving me problems. I'll look at this other one instead. Well, you know, we're coming to the close of the show and I, I wanted to interrupt you for a moment to say, give us a couple of words of inspiration. I mean, your whole time here has been inspirational. Couple but any any words for that kid that teacher thinks that that's a tree and it's really their dad or mom? I, I mean, I, I want, I don't want art to be mysterious. So I think that's part of the, the and people labeling, I mean, that, yeah, it's a problem is, is you know, a, an adult looks at something that a child has made and they, they put their, their interpretation on it, which is, not where this kid is coming from. And so that's a problem. So, you know, maybe people should just let the kid tell you, you know, what is, what, hey, what's that a painting of? Or tell me your story. Or tell me what is, yeah, what are you, what are you, that would be what great are you working on? If you could have kids doing those stories, you know? That would be cool. You heard it first. That's our project. We're coming up with it. It's three women here, I want you to know. Aria, who's quietly laughing at us sometimes. And then there's Julia and I who are just having a great old time. We are enjoying ourselves. It's and um, it works out. That's because we have a lot in common. We appreciate art. We respect each other. And we don't even know each other, but it's like there's something there that just brings you together. And again, given these times and all the craziness, yeah, you know what you're seeing right now? Women working together to bring you a great show about an artist's fabulous work. And it tells a story, it's calming, it's like, it's a gift. And I really, I encourage all of you to come in to see Julia's reception, which will be again, August, uh, August. August. <laughs> October 21st, 20, October 21st. <laughs> That's great. She didn't mean whatever month this is because they'll show it again and they'll get confused. So it's October 21st. Um, you'll meet the artist. You get to talk to her more, hear her, her ideas about her art, enjoy, bring friends. And, I like um, people. I like meeting new people. I like talking about my art. And, you know. So she's not shy. So this is going to be good. She, maybe she'll wear the same cool earrings that match her drawings, too, and her paintings. I, I, I got these earrings because I liked them so much, and I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> See? There's stuff you learn about that she didn't even want to know. Or maybe you did want to know, but you didn't want to ask. But we're coming to the close of our show. And I, I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And shout out to our support over here, Aria, who was just like, you know, yeah, my sister, yeah, that's it, to both of my sisters here. And uh, I always end my show with assalamu alaikum, which means peace be to you. And part of, if you can't find that peace, you know what? You can create that peace. You really can. So... Come down, check out the reception, come in, meet the artists. You might have heard some crazy music in the background because there were other artists here, but they were making music. So we'll see how that all goes. But no, you were not crazy if you did hear it. And um, until next time, if you have a friend or if you are someone who wants to create, who creates 2D art that we can put on the walls here at SCAT, please notify me. Come, let us know. Contact me through SCAT. Because that's the, my mission, to bring out all of Somerville's finest talent, which is all of you, and just work it. So that's what we do here. That's Art at SCAT, and that's the SCAT Gallery. So again, I thank you for coming in. 
I thank you. It's been fun. It has been. It's been a crazy night, and it's been a fun night. So uh, see you next month. Take care. Again, assalamu alaikum. Shalom alaikum.